the UFO abduction 163,000 light years away and my return, the experience was evaluated as true. And uh, I'm translating this for you from a Greek article, but this was originally from a, um, a San Antonio Star article, March 16, 1975. The following story was published in the San Antonio Star, March 16, 1975, under the title, I was kidnapped by a UFO, a UFO bubble, a trip after being abducted on a ship from another planet, which was described as, quote, legal or legitimate, end quote, by a psychologist at the University of Wyoming, Dr. R. Leo Sprinkle, director of counseling and testing at the university, came to this conclusion after a thorough evaluation of the experiences narrated by Carl Higdon. Higdon, then 40 years old, was a drilling rig specialist for AM Well Service Company in late October 1974. While hunting in a secluded area of Medicine Bow National Park, something very strange happened to the point that those who heard him called him crazy, but he swears he's telling the truth. Around 4 p.m., he spotted a group of five elk, a species of giant deer, quite a distance from him. He picked up his weapon, a magnum, marked it and pulled the trigger. And normally, firing this type of weapon would cause at least one injury, especially those of you who are familiar with such uh, hunting uh, uh, weapons will be able to imagine Higdon's surprise with what happened next. Instead of dropping the moose he marked, the bullet dropped his rifle very slowly, almost as if it were coming out in slow motion. In addition, the missile fell in the snow just 50 meters away. It's about 150 feet away from him. So what could have happened, he wondered. And a few seconds later, he received his answer. Quote, immediately, I felt a strange tickling in the air, as you often feel before an electric storm. I turned quickly and I saw a stranger, quote unquote, standing behind me in the shadows. I thought he was just another hunter until my eyes became accustomed to the bright sunlight in the freshly fallen snow. This stranger passed quietly towards me. If he were human, I would definitely hear his footprints, his footsteps in the dry branches covered by the snow. As he describes, he was a guy around one uh, meter 80 said, let's about, uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm five foot nine, that's 101 meter 76. So this uh, stranger must have been around five foot uh, 11 or six foot tall. So uh, he was uh, dressed in a suit that covered him from neck area to his toes. He wore a belt and in the center of which was a six pointed star and a mysterious emblem. He had coarse hair that stood straight like broom hairs. From the top of the head came two rods that looked like antennas. Kindly support my Patreon account. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box. Describing the stranger, he said, His face was scary because he had no chin. His head came straight to his neck. His eyes were unusually small and he had no eyebrows as long as he was uh, with him because, uh, as you'll see, it was several hours. At no point during this period did Higdon ever see the foreigner's hands, if he had any. The sleeves of his one-piece garment were long, while in the place of his hands he seemed to have something like sticks. It was as if he could control gravity with these objects. This stranger later introduced to him as... Uh, Auso one A-U-S-S-O-1, approached him quite close and asked him if he was hungry and without waiting for an answer, he threw a small envelope or a package containing four pills. He took them, although he usually does not take aspirin either. And the next thing Higdon remembers is being inside a transparent cube-shaped spacecraft, which moments later was lifted off the ground and apparently transported to another world somewhere in the infinite void of space. He remembers that inside the strange, uh, vehicle, the strange craft was uh, the foreigner himself, the, the stranger, and the five elk as well.
all unconscious in a separate apartment. There were also two extra beings on the ship. Without any uh, noticeable noise, they had taken off, and he told them that they were heading to their planet about 163 light years away, 163,000 light years away. And together, the three beings placed a helmet on his head that had wires protruding in all directions. They never explained the purpose of this. A little later, his perception of time changed completely. They arrived at their destination. He does not consciously remember coming out of the spaceship, but through its clear walls, it looked like a huge tower with lights rotating around its upper lip. If there was one thing he could compare to, it would be the giant space needle built for Seattle World's Fair. At this point, my eyes started to water, he said. The light here, whether artificial or natural, hurt my eyes and it became very clear, very inconvenient for me to keep my eyes opened. These people told me that our sun affects them in the same way when they are on Earth. Now after that, Higdon confuses what happened. His next conscious memory is to wander in the cold air back on Earth in a state of hysteria. He said, my mind was clouded. I did not seem to know my name or even where I was. All I knew was that I was frozen and terrified. Somehow I stumbled on my truck, which I had left parked on a clearing earlier before I went hunting. It was now stuck in the mud, he said. Finally, after a while of trouble, he managed to contact the radio and ask for help. Sheriff Ogburn and his assistant Ed Tierney showed up just before midnight. It was already more than eight hours after Higdon's mysterious experience began. Marjorie Higdon, Carl's wife, who uh, joined uh, on the rescue team, told the newspaper shortly afterwards that her husband was in a state of panic and could not articulate a single word. She said only after I asked him if he had caught moose did he start to enliven his own mind. He looked at the sky and started shouting, they took my moose. Until they arrived at the Carbon County uh, Country Memorial Hospital, she did not want to touch him. Even in the hospital, her husband kept talking strangely, wildly and meaninglessly. Quote, they took my moose. Where are the pills? The lights are hurting. The receipt is gone. They pointed the gun and left, end quote. The normal lights in the hospital of the hospital were obviously so bright for Higdon that his eyes reddened and began to cause him considerable pain. The nurse folded a damp cloth and placed it over his eyes. Eventually, they had to turn it all off to calm down and, and stop running, stop his eyes from running. A thorough examination at the hospital showed no trace of alcohol or drugs in Higdon's bloodstream. The biggest puzzle is the fact that x-rays taken from his chest showed a lack of scar tissue in his lungs, which was where, in previous tests, the treating physician, Dr. Tonko, remarked, it's like a sci-fi movie. Support for something that would otherwise be a completely unbelievable story came from Mr. and Mrs. Don James, who claimed to have watched a flashing light for about 20 minutes, changing from red to green to white to pulsating pattern on the night of this episode. The Magnum 7mm bullet that Higdon says came out of his gun in slow motion was scrutinized by a team of researchers led by Dr. Walter W. Walker, a metallurgical consultant in the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization of Tucson, Arizona. To the human eye, the sphere looks as if it turned outwards, meaning that the bronze part of the projectile had turned like when we peel a banana. No one had ever seen anything like that in the Chronicles, nor was there any such history recorded. The sheriff's office in Carbon County found no scientific explanation for the condition of the bullet shell. No one could justify what he saw. Later, Higdon's explanation is that he was in a kind of power field, quote unquote, that slowed everything down. Sometime later, after Higdon, Higdon had recovered, Dr. R. Leo Sprinkle contacted Higdon and asked him if he would be willing to undergo hypnosis to determine the validity of all that he had said. And Higdon agreed. Over the course of four hours, in two separate sessions, Higdon was put in a hypnotic state by Dr. Sprinkle and asked to reveal the episode in front of credible witnesses. 
In a brief statement of his findings, the University of Wyoming professor acknowledged that Higdon was cooperating in what was asked of him in order to examine his story. His impression on Carl Higdon was that he was in an inact character with a high education, but with a strong curiosity about the world around him, extroverted, who seemed to have developed good skills for estimating size and distance. And while it's difficult for anyone to believe or disbelieve the testimonies of a single UFO witness, the indirect evidence supports the provisional conclusion that Carl Higdon honestly relates the events he experienced. Hypnotized, Higdon remembers seeing other humans on Earth while on an alien planet. When asked why space creatures traveled such vast distances of light years to reach our Earth, Higdon said they were told they needed wild game and fish to be used as food. What most who had a more up-to-date and comprehensive picture of the wider region thought was that such a statement could finally provide a possible answer to the extinction of cattle and other animals reported in the United States at the time. After the above, everyone can believe whatever they want. And this is from the data of uh, the newspaper article, the San Antonio Star, on March 16, 1975. Please leave your comments and thank you for your support.